Good afternoon, or morning as the case may be, around the world. Um, this is the Pure Ajaji Accelerator coming to you from Arlington, Massachusetts. That's where I am. Joe Corneli is in uh, London, in England, and uh, the, uh, the third person that's joined us so far is Dorotea Mar I, from Portugal. She's, I think, in London now too, isn't she? Probably Warsaw, probably Warsaw, but Warsaw. Someplace in Europe, someplace okay. in Europe. Today we're talking about um, local nodes of pedagogical enterprises, so uh, the real life uh, gatherings and and concrete spaces. Uh, well, not concrete, but wooden or plastic or whatever uh, mobile <laughs> spaces that people, uh, where people come as a gathering, or may, where people gather uh, having been linked and, and uh, brought together by technology perhaps or just by uh, you know meeting someone while you're walking your dog. Or, um, so we, I have one here, I have an, an intern with me and Joe um, and I also have a, the independent publishers of New England which we're, we're slowly integrating pedagogy into uh, at a kind of fits and starts, and uh, Joe Corneli is a uh, he's getting his he's almost got his PhD, and uh, and I'll let you introduce yourself, Joe. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, I'm Joe. Um, yeah, I live a little north of London. I work in London. Um, and I think in in terms of fitting to the theme there's lots of different things here I mean you know for example I don't I don't actually work in London I go in usually once a week but not always I sometimes we do our work meetings by hangout believe it or not um, which is a real luxury to not even have to go into work but I do go in and they want us to go in more in fact they've even gotten us offices and now they're encouraging us to come and go and sit in the offices that they've got for us I think that makes a lot of sense um, although having been luxuriating in working from home, if you can call it that, luxuriating. Uh, recently, I, 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 I'm not so sure going into the office every day is, is my favorite thing. However, when you're there and you see people in person, you do save a lot of time um, if you want to have a conversation with them about work, for example, because you can look at the same stuff. So, um, but yeah, the other anecdote was that I met Charlie before there was a pedagogy project and before there was a pedagogy um, theory or anything like that. I met him in Gdansk, Poland uh, at a conference, which is another thing that brings people together from time to time. Um, not necessarily for work, but sort of something in the intersection of work and fun. Um, and yeah, we've been talking with different people, Dorothea is one of them, about starting local um, either workspaces, hacker spaces, co-living spaces, or some of all of the above, or more. Um, and then one of the other things we've been talking about is this uh, manifesto, which I'll come back to later, uh, but it's kind of not exclusively local and not, not exclusively not. Um, but local certainly factors into the plans of the Pyragogy project. One other quick anecdote I remember was when I was doing stuff with P2PU, I went to a meetup, one or two meetups in London with P2PU people. Um, and we talked then, wouldn't it be great if we could keep this going and keep, keep this happening? Um, and we didn't. But of course there are lots of meetups that happen in London and New York City and other places for interest groups. So, mm -hmm. um, what do so, you yeah. think the best practices are for keeping a group like that going um, without um, having the original instigator sort of burn out? Hmm. One of the ones that I've been involved with remotely and I've talked there is called Lisp NYC. It's a programming group, um, and Ray goes there all the time. Um, I can paste in a link, but they are—they mm -hmm. have a contest. I was a remote judge for the mm -hmm. contest. Um, let's see. Uh, they seem pretty long-standing. They've got sponsors. Um, they've been using the Meetup 
mailing list. I mean, I think the mm -hmm. New York has a big advantage because they've got a huge population density. You know, so there's yeah. always going to be some new person moving into the city who's interested in programming languages or whatever, mm -hmm. um, and some new person who wants to come give a talk. Um, so, well, do you think there's an app like using an app like Meetup is a good um, way to go, or is that just another piece of technology that some people are going to use and some people aren't? Yeah, I think. Well, okay. I think that the the main thing is the it's got to be the the location. I mean, like in my little village, I, I live in a little village north of London, and every week there's a little cafe that opens on Tuesdays, only on Tuesdays. Um, so I'll try to go tomorrow, and they have coffee and cakes and things to eat, mm -hmm. and they also sell fresh vegetables. And it seems to be the place where all of the old people in the village congregate and have a coffee and, and chat together because we don't have a cafe. But the is woman, that the uh, Milton yeah. Keynes or yeah, this is Har Harlington, Bedfordshire. So it's a little oh. a little village, like probably a few hundred people. And uh, but they they want to open it as a cafe. In fact, they've now rented out the space and they're setting it up so it will be open Monday through I don't know Friday, Monday all week. Maybe. Yeah, wasn't there some sort of local? up in arms about having a communal yeah. Store. Yeah, yeah, the people didn't like it. So but but how about you cuz you do this, you've been doing it with the music group that you do at your church. Right. Um and we are building a community. I think uh, I think uh, consistency is the is one overriding uh, success factor. Um just having it all the time putting out the same not doesn't mean you can't put out Different pu publicity, but um, making sure that you cover the the same ones that you have in the past. Like we have a sandwich board out front. We uh, we have a certain number of a list of of uh, media outlets that we put it on uh, tech uh, online and print. Um, and it it's still hard, you know, but. We are starting to get few people coming back to the music thing just because they know they're going to get a good experience, and that sure. the musicians we bring are awesome. <laughs> is that once a week, once a month, or it's is it once regular? A month. Um, I have put a couple new, you know, extra concerts on. So we've had every two weeks in April and May, and just because there were just so many great ones that I wanted to have, but. It's been a little. I think that was a little bit of a of rushing the mm. uh, the development of it because um, it's kind of it's jammed up us jammed us up on the promotion and the po postering and that we don't yeah. have enough uh, evangelists out there yet to. It could be interesting to kind of um, overlap it, you know, like you could bring in, you could find someone else who wanted to use the same space the same day for something else music related, and they could do yeah. their own publicity, they could do their own publicity, but it could kind of be like once a month you'd have your thing, which would be the super special, but every every week mm -hmm. they would have their thing, it could be like the, the kitty version or the yeah. open mic or something, I don't know what. Well, I one of the uh, the artist that we had a couple weeks ago, a month ago, was uh, she's a local person I knew from before and she wants to do um, like master classes mm. and you know in workshops so that could be a really good that's a really good idea actually I think. Yeah she had that say the same same night she could do her own publicity and bring in her own person she wouldn't have to bring in a big crowd to have a master class in fact she would just mm. really need one other person probably but um, yeah, that'd be pretty cool. And you have a wow. similar kind of traffic going. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I remember in Minneapolis, I used to go to. Uh, I think it was weekly. It was called improvisational and experimental music night, and it's still going. And I, I think the thing is, well, we said without the the first people burning out, I think the organizers are still there just because they love doing it. You know, they would they would probably do it if it was just the two or three of them. I mean, that was one of the things also we noticed about PWPU is like, if it's something you would be doing anyway, yeah, then then and you're happy to invite other people, mm -hmm. then perfect. Now we okay. were going to cover uh, 
Fabrizio's uh, Bergamo hub yeah. as well. Um, maybe I'll try and get a, a screen share up here. If I can do it. Okay. Yeah. Um, I don't know a whole lot about it and where it stands right now, but it was it was a nice, uh, a good concept, and you know, kind of along the lines of, as I understand it, of uh, makerspace or or a kind of an idea incubator. Um, yeah, I think what he told me um, recently is he said that in Bergamo, all, almost all of the things he's been talking about have been adopted by the local political folks to talk about sort of after the next election or whatever. So it's it's not that it's necessarily sponsored as the Bergamo Hub, but it is as though all of the stuff he's been promoting and talking about will be on the will be part of the discussion at the city government level. So that's a big success. So um, they're trying to wait until um, to push it through until after the election so that I don't Something along those lines, yeah. I mean, I, I don't know how Italian politics works, but something like that. I don't like think that. it does. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> uh, it, in any case, he, he told me that there's, there is some interest among the political group, which there hadn't been before, and, and that, you know, there's that it seems like all, there are more people around the city who are, who are aware of this kind of idea, some of them at the university, some of them in the mm -hmm. politics. So here, this is all in Italian, but... Um, the art of innovation attraverso la collaboration. Okay, so art, innovation, collaboration, participatory action research. Uh, this is mainly just an outline of the ideas I think that inform the thing. And so Fabrizio has been out there promoting these ideas, and he had this idea of using this space. And I think the space will indeed be used for many of the same things he wanted. So it may not have his branding on it, and it may or may not have mm -hmm. him involved. Let's try. I'm just randomly trying this to see if it works. Wow. So he's created all these cool Yeah, that's really virtual neat. That's, virtual I mean, that's presence, the, but that's the image I have of it that Yeah. girl with a glass in front of a sort of a Italianate building. Yeah. Power plant. <laughs> yeah. Well, so um so here's the thing, I mean, he, he's really put a lot of work into design and thinking it through, and I think I think the big success is um, that he's gotten people talking about it. What he's he said to me recently is that he has another idea to take over or collaborate with an old monastery also in the Bergamo region. Mm -hmm. That one has the benefit that I think it's... Um, you know, sort of already used for cultural purposes, whereas mm -hmm. this, this place, the, the picture is an old power station and it would need lots of money yeah. to, re to renovate. Um, um, so what does he envision having in here? Um, um, I'm not sure if I can find the, the monastery one, but basically it's, it's very similar. He wants to build a collaboration place for people to come and, and do... Uh, workshops, hacking, co-learning, mm -hmm. um, uh, very much the you know. I think he's a little less a little less keen on the startup scene than than others because I think startups are like a kind of virus. But I think um, he's uh, mm -hmm. he's interested in in just having a place where people can come and and learn together and do stuff together. So I mean, you know, like I live right across from the village hall, and it's just a little building. We just got a little. Um, little village, but but indeed there's a schedule and you know practically 24 hours a, yeah. a day it's booked out for something you know. Got well, the nice thing about these on uh, these live places where you can go and and then again not everybody can go to them because you know we're all in different locations, but um, you can just kind of go and then when things occur to you, you don't have to have a big thing prepared like a presentation or something you can mm -hmm. like we do for the accelerator we try to have a topic or we try, you have to line up people and stuff you can just drop in and whatever comes into your brain at that time you can talk to someone about it um, yeah. and I mean, maybe it's, mu hmm. it's much like a, you know a cafe doesn't typically have a schedule a cafe yeah. you just kind of go there you get a coffee and a, a cake or a bowl of soup to go with your coffee and cake or whatever, and you sit down, and if there's someone there, you say hi, and you, you chat. So it's very opportunistic. Yeah. Um, 
just so I was like fun. thinking. I mean, there there's a some people in my neighborhood or re, you know greater neighborhood here who started this. Uh, it's kind of like a collaboration of people to deal with emergencies, and mm. you have a um, like hurricanes and you know I don't know uh, just various snowstorms snowstorms and whatever. But it, you bring, you have, a, they meet up, and it's kind of, there's like this little format for it. I should find the information, but, uh, that, and I think part of it, the Massachusetts gover state government was, had put up some, you know, mm. some uh, templates, and you bring pie, <laughs> and share a pie, and then you kind of tell people what sort of equipment you have. You know, I think it's like a trust building thing, and then... Uh, getting to know your neighbors and gradually being more uh, sharing about it of resources. Yeah. Um, Dorotea is saying some stuff in the chat. Um, yeah, I want. I, I, either she can jump in when. Well, when she's ready, she'll jump in. But I want. I want to say a little bit about this other thing I wanted to share with you guys. The um, this manifesto, which which Dorotea's comments reminded me about. Um, so. Uh, the idea with this manifesto, let's see if you can really see it. Yeah, you see it great. Okay, so um, I'm not looking into the Hangout, so I see exactly what you see. Um, okay, so basically, this is meant to be a manifesto for the entire Pyragogy project, but in terms of the local, um, hi, Andrew has joined us. Uh, oh, Andrew, okay. yeah. Andrew, uh, I was just looking for the... Uh the where am I thing, and I, I, it doesn't seem to ever stick when I... Okay, <clears throat> I'm getting ready to hit it, and okay. when it do, does, the blue button will come up saying that I've started it. Just click on that blue button, and it should put it into your this okay. particular account, you know, and then it should always go up in the sidebar. Yeah, I don't on. see it. I don't see it. Oh, yeah, there. Okay. I have done this before, Andrew, and I just don't know what... Why it doesn't stick? But now I've got it. Okay. Are you using the same browser that you used before? Yeah. I don't really switch. Okay. Because um, I'll tell you, if it's Chrome, I have noticed that on occasion Chrome has the habit of dropping certain apps. First, first it'll go away from the sidebar, and you have to click on those three dots at the bottom to bring up the additional app. Right. Yeah. And then it'll sit there for a while, and then eventually it just sort of, for some reason, goes away. Okay. And it's, it's one of those Google things that nobody knows what's happening. <laughs> it's it's a uh, it's got maybe it's like the the thinking machine, you know. It's, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, listen, thank you so much. Um, I wish I'd th seen it earlier. I was over on Myrtle's thing, and I was paying attention to that computer rather than this one. Then when I started checking my mail, I said, whoops, let me get over there. Okay, Thank you. is there anything Thank else you. you need? Not right at the moment. Um, you could bring my dog in from the backyard if you can. <laughs> Actually, I've got to go get mine in a few minutes. I just <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I should explain to the rest of rest of you that... Um, another hangout we, angel, I'm sure. Yeah, so. the hangout angel has come and and helped us. Thank you, Andrew. Uh, okay. No. Y'all take care. I'll see you later. Bye. Bye-bye. Um, okay. So, yes, you can ex you can explain more later. But I gather that that was a good thing that just happened. It was a good thing. Okay. Um, so I was going to say that, well, it's a really good illustration of the kind of thing I was just going to say. So we've been talking about local. The last couple times I've talked with Doug, who may be busy working, um, but he basically said... Uh, what if we started a university? It could be based in, say, Malta was his example. Yeah, right. Uh, I remember that. Yeah. And I thought, oh, that sounds good. I've never been to Malta, but I'd like to go there. And and so, um, so where to put it? Okay, so here, down here, objective. So I thought, well, why don't we start this new university or Libre University or whatever? Um, people could join from anywhere, and people like Andrew could come and help tutors and so forth. So I think, you know, the idea would be you could live, now it's, it's local and global, you could say be working in Arlington and you could say I want to get a, I don't know, a master's degree in music production or whatever whatever it is that you're interested in and you could tune into this 
Libre University, which just happens to be based in Malta, but the courses could be organized anywhere. And somehow at the end of the day, you'd actually get a degree in that thing. And, um, and it would be organized much like we have now with people dropping in and out and mm -hmm. plants coming and going. And, you know, so Dorotea was interested in, say, I don't know, getting a degree in architecture and using this Lisbon space as an example she could, or if she was interested in teaching courses in mathematics, uh, which is her area of specialty, she could. Um, and it would all kind of be self-organized, but, um, but in the end you'd get a real degree out. And you might have to make one or two trips to Malta, which would be like, oh my gosh, you know, don't make me to go to Malta, please, it's too sunny. Yeah, it's um, just it's just too nice there. Too nice. So, um, so we all thought that would be a kind of kind of good idea to blend the blend the local and the and the global. But so I, I added it to our list of possible goals. The the key yeah. here is that we've got all these other possible projects and possible goals, and the thought is how can all these little sorry <laughs> how can all these little local uh, things feed into that? So. That's a, that's a good question. Um, yeah, whether, whether, I mean, they're, whether they're whether the projects or things we're doing locally, do we agree that that's a worthwhile goal, and is is it something we can imagine happening in three or four years? I don't know. Imagine is one thing, maybe not. Um, anyway, I don't I don't know. So what do you think? Or maybe Dorothea wants to jump in. Or uh, Dorothea does imagine. So yeah, do you want to jump in? Um, and again, we could start with pedagogy, like we did with the handbook, and add things. I can I can imagine like getting the universe of of degrees that people want to get and just having them ready. Uh, the, the special idea here is that that to kind of make it focusing mostly on free culture, peer production, um, you know, all the kinds of stuff that we already do, right? So it wouldn't be maybe music production would be a bit of a stretch, but could work as long as it had the pure production. Well, publishing could angle. work. I mean, I publishing could definitely work. Yeah. Whatever yeah. any of us is into that has we have some depth in. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And 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 there may be some stuff that we just want to do without getting a degree on it. You know, so like yeah, um, some stuff that we want to do for fun. But but then maybe it's some stuff like you already are co-teaching and co-learning with your IPNE people. So maybe maybe someone. Like, you know, you might say, oh, well, I'd love to have another intern. Um, and he or she could come along, and we could keep doing this every quarter. And then they could get a degree in publishing after putting in enough work with you and other people around the world. So maybe your one site, they could come hang out with you in Massachusetts or participate virtually, and then they go someplace else, like Lisbon or whatever, and they, they learn something there. So... I don't know. They don't want to. I don't want to hijack it with this with this idea. But I thought it was quite nice talking to Doug about it and imagining what would it yeah, be. Yeah, like. I wish I had been in on that. I I always appreciate his perspective. Cool. Is he is he um uh, not around now? Or? I don't think he's probably working. But by the way, so yeah, if, if you have a chance, Charlotte and Dorothea, you could jump on here and add some personal goals. And if you have projects like IPNE, clarify some of the project. Or peer review, I guess, is what it's listed as. Clarify some of the goals here, and we can think about how it all feeds into this mm -hmm. thing. You know, so I mean, if, as if we... as an officer in the organization, I can do some speaking for the organization. Mm -hmm. But I think if I, what I'm not really good at, I guess, is what I'm saying, is sort of presenting it to people so that they're excited and interested enough to participate. Hmm. Well. We've all, we've also talked about like you know how much <clears throat> maybe maybe IPNE is just one member in this project because there's got to be a bunch of people out there who are who are as excited as you are personally about rethinking and and changing the way publication works as publishers and if you kind of say found some of them are in IPNE some of them are in other organizations because you know there there's some people who are who are not too excited about changing the way publication works and, and trying new models. They're more looking forward to having a nice book like, I don't know, like this one, Howard Rangel's book, published <laughs> by MIT Press, and they're sort of saying, you know, what's all this crazy talk about creating something new? Um, we just want something like that, and that's that's fine. I mean, you know, more power to them if they get published by MIT Press. So, 
you know. Um, um, but you know, I, uh, who who are the who are the people? I was talking to Ray the other day, and he was saying, "Well, I've been running around looking for investors and startups and people interested in Planet Math." And I said, "Well, are you finding the right people?" And it specifically. Uh -huh. Specifically, maybe the right people are not people who will be interested in Planet Math, but maybe the right people are people whose projects you can join as a participant, and you can learn there. And I said, Ray, here's an example. You've met this guy in the Bronx. I don't know what university he's at. And you're going over there every week to go do research on mathematical biology. That is pretty cool, and you're both getting something out of that. What if you found some other people like that? in New York City or whatever interested mm -hmm. in programming. You could meet up once a week and join that. And I think it's it's more incremental than that I'm used to operating. Um, you know, we I think if I looked at the individuals that I come across in IPNI, uh, if I approach them when I see them at at a appropriate time or just a informal time, um, you know, and just it went out a little more slowly uh, rather than just putting out a general call for... Uh, yeah, and it's also, I think the local could also have another another, another kind of flavor because instead, instead of, I don't know how you pitch it to them, but instead of saying, hey, we're going to really try something new and different and lots and lots of new and different ideas, if rather than that you said to someone, I mean, could be Kyle, for example, hey Kyle, what's what what do you think the future of the book is? And let's have a few sessions about that. And you could invite some of the IPNE people into that conversation. Mm -hmm. you could say, well, here's something fairly concrete. It's a discussion about two people who I don't know something about the future of the book. I I, I might have an opinion about that too, and then they could they could voice that. So you know, keep it. Yeah. it the more concrete it is, the more likely people I think are going to be able yeah. to do something about it. And I, think, I asked. Yeah. I was at this. Uh, well. Stone Temple Consulting, which is a social media, you know, SEO type group on Google Plus, um, and Eric Engo was at our, he spoke at our uh, IPNI conference, and his his partner Mark Traphagen, um, who who just came on board, um, they are they are having they have gone through Meetup.com and started a New England. Uh, Hurl, which is a hangout in real life, and it meets every month, um, and it's just, it was like the most fun that you can imagine. It was just, I mean, not the most fun you can imagine, but um, it was all these people who have been hanging out online, the hangouts, um, chatting with each other. They're in the similar fields, or they might be in brick and mortar businesses, but they come, you come into this room, and there's some beer, and there's you know, we had a hangout with Ronnie Bincer, who's in Colorado. He's a, a hangout um, mastery person. And it was really fun. And uh, they, they're just genuinely interested in that aspect, the, the real aspect of, of engaging with like-minded people. And so... Hmm. That's, that does sound fun. I mean, and I also think, you know, as you know, there's no shortage of events, physical events you could go to in, in Cambridge, which you're nearby. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, But the, I think the finding the like-mindedness or the, the, you know, like I went to a talk where it was Amartya Sen talking, and I was like, well, it's great to see a Nobel Prize winning economist talking about economics, and you know, he's very insightful, but I kind of went in one ear and out the other. <laughs> uh, and then I went and saw someone else there. Uh, they, they have this annual talk about a, a cycle. They have annual lectures by a notable, um, notable author. And I think I went to one of those talks because it's like a, it's a series, and I, you can buy them as books. And I thought, oh, I'll get to go see one by the real author in the flesh in, in Harvard. But I don't even remember who he was. So you know, the problem is with these kinds of things that if they're just entertainment. You're not going to remember what it was or who it was or if you yeah. learned anything. I mean, I think the guy was Argentinian, but I don't, I absolutely don't recall. And the funny thing was that I was at the same cafe as him having a coffee or whatever the night before, and I was so so pleased to be in the same room as his Nobel Prize winning 
literature guy, but I, I still had no clue what his name was or what yeah. kind of books he wrote or anything. So, you know, you got you got to have that's I think where the concrete, doable activities. Well, and then something help. happened today at our meeting, our executive committee meeting of IPNI. Um, you know, I've I'm having these hangouts, these these uh, indie office hours and Facebook TVs talking about aspects of publishing and author discovery. Um, the face of the book is more like authors. But I got the, uh, I made a, an appointment with the head of the independent publishing, I be book publishing association, which is our, we're affiliated and a regional affiliate of them. And the pre new president is going to come on the hangout um, tomorrow or no, uh, no, June 10th. And, um, so everybody's sort of like perking up because she's a celebrity, you know, in a way, in the indie book publishing community. And, I mean, I don't want to just do it because she's a celebrity, but, or, you know, they invite people, but it does get them on board in a way that just talking about, um, you know, metadata for, at, for your print-on-demand wouldn't. You know. No, that's that's totally true, and I think uh, it it if you can bring people in for that reason, then yeah, then it will be then they'll they'll come, they'll have fun, and I think that maybe these are it's kind of like ingredients. I'm kind of thinking like, what are the ingredients of a cake? And this one might be kind of like the the eggs or something, but you need the eggs mm -hmm. and the, you also need the flour and you also need the baking powder. Mm -hmm. Hope we maybe some chocolate or and the frosting something. and the decorations are like the celebrity something. thing, you know. Exactly. Yeah, maybe that's what it is. And it's like and we uh, have uh, we have Howard is our celebrity. Um, yeah. You know. Yeah, and he can he can also he has the also the power to bring other people who are celebrities, maybe not quite as as celebrities as him, but maybe some like. Um, you know what's her name? Uh, da, da, da. Well, anyway, he, he introduced me to her, and I think I offended her first thing immediately. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we should invite Howard back, not because he's the celebrity, I think, but because I I would love to get him talking about to talk with him about this um, strategy yeah. for this yeah, global cool. global university. Is it something he would? find exciting? Is it something that he would um, want to participate in? Because, I mean, you know, he could be the dean. He's the, he could be the head of the thing. Um, and we would be quite happy to have him do that. But so, yeah. so far, he's probably never, never even heard of it. So, um, so well, are, sure aren't there, haven't there been efforts made like this? Yeah. Yes, of course. I mean, so there's a, there's a list down here of precedents, and we need more mm, lists. You know, so if you think of more, but We've got Sailor, PWU, the Open University UK, Free Knowledge Institute, Free Technology Guild. That was from me. Um, but yeah, of course, there's Phoenix. Um, I don't know. You know, there's probably lots of other ones. There's the there's the. I got their um, sticker and I stuck it on my alarm clock. Working group for free educational, open educational resources. Uh huh. Do we have a screen share, or does that would it not make? I could, sense? I could, but I'm just typing in one one quick thing. But yeah, I'll show you the precedents. Absolutely, yeah. Um, yeah. So these are the ones I thought of, but there's no doubt lots and lots more uh, than PDPU, and this one should really be indented because it was like an example we tried there. Um, and some of them are still very much around. PUPU is around. Working Group for Open Educational Resources is around. Um, and maybe we could work with them. Yeah. Um, There's but, hmm, the World ahead. University or something I think I heard of. on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It some seemed a little bit um, sort of one person's vision, but... Yeah, but we need to research them and find out what's exciting and not exciting about them. And mm -hmm. I think in terms of a in terms of a chapter for that handbook version three, a sort of survey of this kind of stuff would be really a great chapter. Yeah. Um, you know. Yep. Um, I wonder if Doug would write one, or maybe. is he far enough into that? 
I don't know. I don't know what Doug is up to right now. He, the last time I heard, he, he had found work and that was paying work, and he was excited to be making some money. So That's good. My sense was he may be disappearing from volunteer stuff a oh, little bit. But okay. I'm sure we can ping him. But, and also, you know, his work will, the way his job goes, his, it will be done sometime, and he'll have made the money and then have free time. So. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, anyway, we should do some research on that. But I, I will contact Howard about this. Um, Good. And we should definitely get, yeah, so we've got Bergamo, but we should definitely get the uh, Lisbon thing in here, Dorote, if you want to. Um, and any other local local activities. You, you know, we don't have to make big global things. Mm -hmm. At first, we could sort of start relatively small. We could add, for example, the thing you're doing at the, at the church, maybe even more of an example of something that we could accelerate um, than the IPNE thing, because the IPNE is sort of, Seems like it's still a little bit. Well, it sounds like it sounds to me like that context is a little bit not quite the right context. Like it's a great idea, mm -hmm. but we should keep when we should keep working on it. But we might need to work on it in a context that involves IPNE as a source of some participants. But who else is interested in this kind of stuff? And yeah, it doesn't have serving. to be just that. That it could be independent publishing. Okay, so globally, I mean. I mean, that is one of the missions of our organization is to uh, provide educational resources and um, True, but publishers. then then the, then the other the other question I guess is partly you know who are those publishers? So even if IPNE does all the production work on the thing, then you're going to have to get it to those people to read it and 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 participate in that hit that mm -hmm. way. So it might have to be a slow process. Maybe we'll find out. Um, all right. Well, so I don't know. Are there any closing words, Dorothea? Are you do you still prefer to be eating silent and <laughs> eating or taking it easy? Um, she says they're gonna have. Uh, I wish I was eating now. They're gonna have a cafe with music. Yeah. Um, and that is yeah. that in Lisbon? Yeah, that's in Lisbon. Yeah. So. Uh, cool. When I travel again, I will love to come by and see. Yeah. So what I was saying before before you got on, I was saying my mom read the book or read part of the book and said she wants more examples. And I think, well, we've been trying, but um, network. Yeah, that's the big thing we talked about is networking with other spaces, not just having it be one space, but creating a, a global network. That's very very good. Exactly. And so yeah, I mean, yeah. we can totally imagine, you know. Let's say, because this plan for making a university could be next year. I think this very much does relate to the local thing. It's like, how, who, what are, what are some of the local things we could, we could, um, we could, we could network with. So we could build a direct. We could one of the things we could try to do participate in building a directory. I'm sure one exists of hacker maker spaces. Mm -hmm. you know, that'd be a really fun thing. Find it. Maybe we can contribute to it. There's places like the Artisans Asylum in Somerville, Mass, um, which is probably the biggest makerspace. Um, you can rent, you can buy a membership, or you can rent an actual physical space. And it's all sort of open, and you get qualified in these different machines, and you can use a plasma metal cutter or, a, you know... A, different kinds of saws or gets you can go hang out with a jeweler and see what they're doing and it's a, it's a really an interesting space and there's probably been a lot written about it but um, mm. oh I didn't mean to force your your thing into that thing I, I meant more like can we can we read it because I can imagine making it and then I realized well it's probably someone exists probably it already exists already like um, you know what? What would be an interesting outcome that we could do this year? So, like, uh, yeah, don't want fit in. No, I'm not suggesting you should, but I think that the the network maybe already exists of some interesting people and be mm -hmm. worth knowing who they are. Kind of like reading the phone book. It's not that interesting, but um, <laughs> but well, sometimes it's worth having one. Yeah, it, it's good to to see what works for other spaces too. Mm hmm. Okay. Yeah, well, you, yeah, in Europe you do, but then, 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 you know, there's also the question of, oh, I don't know, how would I put it? I mean, are there, 
Well, I'm just saying this this list we have here is quite short. That's all I'm saying. It fits on one one screen, and I I don't know if our goal for next year or this year should be to grow it by having many more projects. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense I to think me we necessarily. Need to but pursue them and yeah, you know, have different benchmarks of progress. In the yeah, and I, what what I said to what I said to Jan was like, well, let's see how they fit together. I think how they fit together is one of the things that's quite quite nice. Mm -hmm. and if, you know, and if we can look at our list of patterns and see if which ones they're using and which ones we haven't even just on don't have on our list, um, that would be a useful test of the handbook as a as a guide for yeah. spaces. Yeah, right. So like now we kind of got Bergamo Hub as sort of the poster child of local, but we really should have a few other local. I mean, Charlie's uncertainty principle is a bit local, but you know we should have a few other things that have. Yeah, for example, local is that even is local even a pattern? So this that's an interesting thing to kind of play this list against the pattern. List. So and these don't have to be things that we've come up with ourselves. They can just be existing, pure yeah. enterprises. Yeah, they they can. I mean, I think that the the some are ones where we're like planning math. I didn't come up with that, but I have been participating, and so like there are things that we might want to push forward. And then these mm -hmm. precedents down here, whoop, 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 are kind of like things maybe we don't really have, have a whole lot to do with. But maybe I'll actually clear out my office and and have you know our regional group members. They can drop by whenever they want or. You know, I kind of like that because I I like having people come th come in and you know I just don't want to put it out for the general public, but it'd be yeah. Cool well, that that would really solve the local problem because you're there a lot and you yeah. could sort of say I have office hours such mm -hmm. and such a time. I mean, that that looked like that one video I watched, which was from a while ago, where Tortoise and I don't remember who else was there in person. Mm -hmm. But you know, there are a few people in person, a few people joining via Hangout, and that seemed like a very interesting conversation. Yeah, there was one where Gigi and uh, I think Anna Kuhn were tuning in. It was kind of cool. I mean, mm -hmm. maybe maybe we could add, have some of the Piragaji yeah. uh, principles um, come to the IPNI Hangouts and sort of cross fertilize. Mm -hmm. If it seems like if it seems like Hangout is is Google Hangout is not the thing for this group, then I love the idea of having just even a few people there in, in person. That okay. might be much more the speed of the people who want you know just like these old folks who gather across the street aren't probably not going to hang out with each other on Hangout. Yeah, they might well, like what to know we what did it at is. the what we did at the Stone Temple thing. I um, it was you know we had. Ronnie c come in on Hangout, and there were about 18 or 20 of us in the room. They put the camera way up, so it just felt like he was part of, and they had a huge screen. It felt like he was part of the, um, you know, part of the 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 group in in the room. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, you know, if people are more comfortable being there in person, we can also bring in a, a hangout. It's just the technology here is much better than any place in town that I've found to... Uh, well, yeah. And then they wouldn't have to worry about the setup because you could do that as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's an um, interesting idea. And anyway, yes, you, you have two people there now, so maybe I should let yes. you go and get back to work, but I, I think... Yeah, uh, I, I have um, cookies. These are um, lavender, vanilla lavender vanilla sugar cookies. Yum. Sounds yeah. great. No, I really, really want to eat. No, Hopefully something you can't some. get on a hangout. No, but I get the look. It looks pretty. And I think <laughs> uh, I'm going to go get my squash, which is also all right. pretty good. Well, all right. What are we talking about next week on the accelerator? Um, I think we need to finalize who's in for... Yeah, for June, because it's supposed to start, the the official cycle is supposed to start, so all of this has been warm-up, and I think that this is, we're getting good and warmed up now. Um, and what is, what are we starting in June? So, okay, let me show you this real quick while we're on. So this is the, still the homepage, which hardly doesn't get used much, but um, 
This is a quick summary of what is the periodic accelerator. It tells us who we are, what we're doing, why we're doing it. List some of the projects we should check. Are these the ones that are in and what are we doing? Mm -hmm. um, but basically it says we have eight weeks now semi-scheduled in advance so we could even pencil in the hangouts and stuff. Um, oh, okay. First quarter starts June 1st. We have two months of work on this schedule so this is the this is the um, pure guide in action syllabus so I can tell my mom hey we're making lots of more examples right now so you know set uh, the who, initial challenge and so forth. Who could we send this to? I mean who, who do we include? Well so right now the listed projects are basically Jan, me, Charlie, and you. But of course other people are welcome to join with whatever project. Um, mm -hmm. or, and what are we going to do for them if they join their project? Well, so we basically walk everyone through this this scheduled uh, thing. Oh, Dorotea so wants to be on there too. You should, you should. Yes, you should. Lisbon Space, for example, or Dorotea, mm -hmm. whatever whatever project you want, or several, you should, yes. And you, you are definitely invited. Um, the question is just how to describe what you want to do. Um, and I think, um, yeah, so what we do is we'll walk through this schedule for eight weeks. Um, let me read it out. It says, set the initial challenge and build a framework for accountability among participants. Then we have a week to basically reflect on what your goal, what, what was happening, and people can kind of check in what was their progress, what, what, was, what, was, what was happening, um, are they on track, etc. Then week two, kind of building this network, find other people who can support you in achieving your goal, um, solidify the work plan, and again, there's another week to reflect on that. So, you know, if you're doing a bunch of networking, for example, Charlotte, like finding other independent publishers, and you're saying, yep, yeah, by week three, or by week, if you say by week four, I really want to build this network of people and, and find out what we're, who we're going to do, who we're going to do stuff with. Week four, you know, you can say, oh, how did that go? You know, and kind of report Are these that. for the? Is this for the leaders of the project or for anyone involved in it? Or and how will each week be? All of those listed projects covered? Or yeah, it was. So I think this is why I said it. Here we would use unhangouts if we actually had a very huge attendance. We could use unhangouts and break into groups, but if we have less than ten people, assuming it's just the leaders of the projects, then yeah. But let's assume that we can scale the meetings as needed. So if if, if it, say by week four, using you as an example again, let's say you had found a bunch of people who wanted to work together on a um, you know independent publishing handbook, and they all want to come to the meeting, and they, in fact they want to make it a working meeting. Whoops. Um, you know they can uh, they can. Ju come and join, jump into the unhangout or whatever, we'll set it up like that. Yeah. But hopefully you can then summarize and say, where's this list that says uh, par, review what was supposed to happen, establish what is happening, what's right and wrong, what did we learn or change, what else should we change going forward. So every every other week kind of review your your progress. And you can do that totally, this is meant to be done as a group, so if it's not just it's not just you filling this in, the more you could involve the people you're working with, the better. Absolutely. Right. And but, so each week mm -hmm. will include a status report from everybody yeah. on that list. Yeah, or at least every other week should include some kind of status report. And also, if you, if you notice, th this kind of outline is very similar to the pattern template. So it could be that you'll come up with a new pattern. Like, it could be that you say, you know, our pattern is, like, uh, cookies available at every <laughs> meeting or something. Um, mm -hmm. And then you could explain why why that's an interesting or good pattern for, for local groups. Okay. Um, then by week five, solidifying the work plan, you have basically two more working weeks to kind of take your work plan and do something concrete with it. Uh, or two or three more weeks. Um, and then Charlie is saying, can you write something up as a summary of what happened to include in the handbook or or in his zine, and then there's four weeks where we basically go back to our schedule of do whatever. what whatever we want as needed as wanted. Um, and when are we starting this? Um, starting June first. So let me go back to that other thing I have concrete. 
I had concrete dates in the in the Google version. I can't remember. I've got to type them in, but basically it's the first Monday or first Monday in June, I think is the third. I should type those in here. Yeah, yeah it's two weeks from yeah. two weeks from today. So yeah. Can we put that in, that topic in our Google Hangout or is it gonna be just um Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, so something like, uh, I mean, we'll have to figure out exactly how we want to say it um, and we want to figure out. But I think next week we need to figure out who's in, are they really in, what are they, are, do they agree to this because this is still subject to change. So I think we've got about two weeks to decide. Yeah, so maybe final. that now that we have 800 people in the Pyragogy and Action community, yeah, hopefully some more of them want to join because this is just the same list as before. I mean, Dorothea is not on the list, but she should be on the list, and we want her on the list. Um, and so, you know, what does that mean? It means basically, what's the name of the project, and can we can we link to it someplace? Does it exist? What um, about the Bergamo? It's. I think. Well, Fabrizio. Last time I talked to him, he's kind of taking some time off because he's busy looking for work. Um, yeah. So insofar as we can support Fabrizio finding work, then maybe, but if we can't <laughs> figure out how to get him some work, then then I think he's going to be busy otherwise. Um, okay. Well, I have to yeah. um, go make some tea and stop eating cookies. Tea and cookies, yeah. Not necessarily immediately at the same time, but they go good together. In, they in do. The These are such area. good cookies. So, yeah, All right. So well, basically, two weeks to finalize that, and then yeah. So next hangout, let's make that. Let's make that next hangout finalize everything before the first. The organizational. Um, okay. Yeah, Sounds and if good. it worst case scenario, it could just be the three of us um, for eight weeks talking our way through this schedule, which wouldn't be the world's worst thing. No. Um, but I think others seem interested. We got it. We should remind Ping Yan because I think he. He would I like to do it, for but this, yeah. it may be that this, it may be that the time is bad. In which case, we've got to to figure out what time works for him. But yeah, we. Anyway. I don't mind changing the time. I don't think anybody really cares. I mean, no, but we should we should we should put out a poll or something because there's a yeah. lot of people who've been participating and, and they may like this, but uh, we've got to check. Like Anna, John for, Glass Anna, for example, was able to. He had class too. So yeah. Okay. So that's all one right. thing we should. Do. Anyway, all right. Talk to you soon. Yeah, I like this time too. So, but maybe we'll add a different time instead of the Wednesday or something mm -hmm. for the for the other one. Okay, well, bye bye YouTube and bye bye Google Hangouts. Um, and the three billion people who are watching. Yes, talk to you all next time. All bye. right, ciao. See ya.